So how about I be a little bit cliche and let's talk about um, altars, where we actually do our spiritual work. Necronomicon is coming. So an altar is essentially where you set the stage to begin that psychodrama and that shift um, in the energy around you, the, that shift in your mind, that shift in your conscious and your subconscious. Ooh, I got a cat back there. Hey, Teeny. Um, on a side, on a side note, um, this is <clears throat> uh, nine years to the day that my cat Reese over here showed up at my house. So I kind of technically call this her birthday, even though I don't really know when she was born. But I'm going to say, um, you know, it's like a happy finding day because you followed me home. Hey, you a little content that I just gave you tuna? Or I don't know, maybe she's a little, uh, she has a little bit of stage fright. Anyhow, and back to it. So altars are where we set the stage for our spiritual work, and they kind of require... Um, a bit of symbolism of different things that will shift your mind from the mundane, everyday, upwork, home, TV, bed world to the more contemplative and spiritual realm. Now, depending on your own personal um, quirks and likes and dislikes, your altar can have a, literally anything on it as long as it means something to you and as long as it creates that shift in your mind from up work home TV bed to I am going to do some I am going to use this space to do spiritual work to shift my life for the better or at or in this space the laws of the of the physical universe the laws of muggles let's say do not apply <clears throat> so um, I kind of got this idea from a conversation I had with one of my buddies a couple of days ago because I demonstrated to him one of my altars, and yes, I have uh, several around the house, um, thanks to um, my significant other's wonderful ideas. And, um, one second. <clears throat> and let's just talk about th that for a little bit. Let's start off with cardinal directions kinds of things. Okay, so, uh, necronomically speaking, the normal altars for um, for invocations, like the Book of Calling, that's to be set in the north. For the uh, Eurelia text, it's to be set in the west. And I'm probably going to screw it up if I mention any of the other ones because it's not exactly off the top of my head at the moment. So let's just continue. Anyway, so on a stereotypical altar... Wherever you set up your space, you know, if you feel inclined to a certain direction or you follow a certain tradition, then go with that. Most altars are usually uh, faced in either the north. Um, yeah, I would say I would say the north, although some other ones are set in different directions. And I know my buddy at the Black Tower definitely would be able to talk about this a little bit better than me. So, uh, hey, bud, there's a video idea for you. Anyway, um... So in a traditional altar sense, the um, they're, they're, it's divided into elemental quarters. So in the north you have earth, in the east you have air, in the west, you, in the south you have fire, and in the west you have water. So on your altar in those particular areas, you are basically supposed to put different things that symbolize those certain elements. And this could literally be anything as long as it kind of just follows with falls within those elemental correspondences. So in the north, you could have rocks. You could have things that are solid. You could have anything in your... You could have a depiction of anything like a picture of anything in your life that you deem as being solid and stable. You could have any type of um, um, representation of like a model or something of, of something that is solid. In the east, you have anything that is related to air. So you can have leaves, um, mu uh, musical instruments, wind instruments, um, that's also wind, um, air, air, wind, and intellect, so you could, you could represent it by books, um, and, uh, wands also go there. Oh, uh, by the way, taking a step back for a second, north, I would also put, like, a pentacle there, um, because the pentacle, pentacle itself is representative of earth. Okay, so I did, uh, north and east, so let's go with south. So, south is fire, that's where you would place your athame, that, um, fire is anything passion, um, you know, colors like red and things, 
and um, anything that you could be passionate about, like if you're a dancer or something, you could have a picture of yourself as a dancer there. In the West, you would have um, water, emotions, so you could have um, sea creatures or anything that is emotionally provocative. Um, it could even be like a little depiction of like a, a, a painting or something that evokes um, great emotion. Um, now, you literally could put anything on your altar as long as it has meaning to you. So my altar downstairs, um, which I have an altar in my basement that faces west. I have an altar in my bedroom that faces... Um, huh. If I walk up there, I have... I have another altar that actually faces west. In my kitchen, I have an altar that faces north. And over here in the um, in the living room, uh, over this way, we have a little altar that faces east. I'm going to have to play around with the one upstairs then if I have two altars that face west. Um, but essentially, both of those upstairs and downstairs are uh, Necronomicon altars uh, because I've ascended to that level of working with the Eurelia text and stuff. That's why they both faced, face west. Um... But the one downstairs in my in my man cave is much more personal. So I actually have the very first altar cloth that I ever bought, which has wonderful little depictions on it, um, and uh, several personal items. I actually have one of my uh, printed out manuscripts of Lamadou Dean gear on it. So essentially, an altar. Um, by the way, technically speaking, there is nothing again. There's uh, no religion that really kind of talks about um, an altar being bad. So even if you are kind of new to paganism or for anybody that stumbles on this video that's not really into paganism, if you just want an area so you can sit and contemplate and think differently about your life rather than like, this is my computer desk, this is where I do homework, this is my computer desk, this is where I pay bills, this is the desk where just tons of books pile up. If you want something different than that, make it. People can even make altars that are only temporary. Um, just for the time being. I actually have an altar in the middle of the floor, which is a, a piece of shelving that I talked about a, a while ago, where um, that's got a mandal of calling on it, and we essentially use it for literally anything. I have um, one side of it has a truckload of Zelda symbolism on it. Um, all the elements are written out in Hylian script. There's a Triforce on it. There's a, I literally just kind of mod podged it, where I have um, like the elemental table from Enochian on it. I have um, Ocarina songs from The Legend of Zelda on it. I have elemental descriptions like those little triangles, the ones that have lines through them and the ones that don't on it. And, um, you know, it's just a great um, medita meditative place. We actually use it to have tea on quite a bit. And back when, um, several months ago, because we always redecorate, blame her, not me, but we actually, in this back corner, was a meditational space where we had that altar and just um, several cushions and things, and we would just sit back there and meditate. And when we wanted to work with, um, when we wanted to work with plants and plant spirits and things like that, we would actually have tea, and we would put that on the altar. And that was just kind of a interest, interesting space. By the way, I really gonna nag her to be on here to talk about feng shui because that's the way that she kind of decorated most of the house. And I think it would be kind of interesting for um, anybody who's interested to look up. Uh, feng, shui, feng shui and um, kind of redecorate your house because there are certain areas in your house that are more um, helpful to have different things like certain um, areas in your house have to do with uh, marriage and family or money and things like that so like having clutter in one of those areas can um, theoretically influence your life negatively in that way so let's keep talking about altars for a second so an altar is a space where you go to have a mind shift. It's where you go to communicate with whatever divinity is to you. And if div if your connection with divinity um, is brought about by thinking at a at a high higher intellectual level through um, artifacts and figures that have to do with science fiction or different things like that, like um when in you know, I'm just not going to go with examples because I don't want to ramble. But whatever is spiritual to you, whatever evokes a certain emotion to you, whatever shifts your brain away from the everyday world to you is what could go on an altar. Some people might have tons of statues on it of different spiritual figures. Some people might have nothing but paintings on it. Some people might have... Um, Artifacts and little little things from video games to go with to go with me um, on it. I mean, my uh, you know I have a Hylian shield uh, replica collectible that is always on my altar in the basement. 
I also have these little charms that I made, which was technically the first spell work I ever did um, about 10, 11 years ago, always on that altar. I have a statue of Cthulhu on that altar, which is uh, thanks to one of my, one of my friends. And um, I, have, I have a couple of other things, but I'm not standing in front of it, so it's not like I can list it off. But an altar is a space where you step out of your, wor out of your mundane world and you enter a different one. So some things I would talk about is never put anything mundane on an altar. I'm guilty of that sometimes, and I've gotten yelled at about it. You know, don't put that there. That's a sacred space. And, you know, so if you're walking by and you're cleaning or something, don't put your soda down on your altar, right? Just don't do it. This ain't spiritual. Anyway, um, and when, you know, when you go to sit at your altar and meditate, you could, you could look at your different figures and contemplate the different things and think about what, um, think about the difficulties that you have in your life. You could sit at your altar and you could, you know, journal, um, you, you could try to get some inspiration to do some spells to change your situation, but never sit there. You know, if you're in a bad mood and you find yourself sitting there trying to change and shift your mind and you can't do it within a couple of minutes, then walk away because you don't want to put the negative energy on your altar. Um, that's supposed to be a, a spiritual healing spot. Um, so never walk in there with negativity. Don't stay in there with, with negativity. Don't put anything mon mundane on it. And shift your altar from, from time to time if, if you like. If something that you put on there is spiritual at one point and you just kind of look at it and it's like bland, shift it up. Change it up. See what see what else you can make. Um, some of you with like smaller living situations might have to have a like a put away altar, um, where you could even have a box with all of your spiritual stuff on it. And when you're ready to ready to work, you could bring the box out, open the box, take the stuff out, put the stuff on top of the box, and that becomes your altar. Fantastic. Um, it's really just uh, it's a way to set the stage for how to do for how to do and where to do your spiritual work because you know. Let's just say I, I cleaned off the futon and I sat there and I wanted to do a, a spell thing. Well, I sit on that futon doing everything, you know, from from writing, from writing rewriting my manuscript to taking a nap to watching TV from there. And that's just, that's a mundane space. And trying to shift it is kind of like, eh, no good, you know? Um, it's, I can't think of an analogy for it, but I hope you guys can kind of get an idea of this, where it's, it's setting a spot as this is what I do here. So it doesn't get mud muddled. It doesn't get muddied with other intentions. That's that's kind of the idea. When you walk into a say, when you walk into um circle, you know, when you cast a circle, when you create create your temple, you're setting the tone for what you do there. And if you have a permanent altar somewhere, you're setting the tone for what happens there. So you don't want to meddle with it. Never look at your things and you know, like if you're if you're one of those, and I'm not making any accusations about anybody, but if you're one of those people. <coughs> that tends to be a little bit more physically aggressive when you're mad and kind of take it out on little things. Never do that to any of to any of your altar spaces and never let anyone or yourself play around near an altar where you could possibly like knock something over because that's just putting bad mojo in there. So keep the space sacred, keep it spiritual, keep it meaningful to you and use that space to create those shifts in your life make it the area where you work it's kind of like you know in the living room you have fun when you go into your office that's where you get business stuff done when you go to your altar that's where you get spiritual stuff done uh, and i hope this made sense um and uh i don't know kind of ran out of juice but let me know what you guys think good hunting